much, uh, Connor, and congratulations to Connor, to uh, all of you uh, for producing a wonderful meeting. Um, uh, it's already a fixture, and it's going to be for a long time to come. Uh, it's also making me speak more quickly, so uh, your fault. Um, delighted to have the opportunity to talk about uh, a subject that um, I've also chosen uh, the opportunity to speak when you've made my case for me. And to be honest with you, many of the arguments uh, that and issues that you've advanced this morning are ones um, that I'm going to touch on again, but only to repeat. Um, this is not just about degree programs, it's about the fundamental education that's available to those in the profession that's emerged in this country and is emerging in other countries uh, as we speak, and how we best resource those professionals to achieve the most that they can. Um, I want to talk a little about why we change and how we change. Uh, this is the point in the uh, exercise where everyone says, and now we go back to ambulance men were once just van drivers, okay? Um, I thought I would say that, but not only say that, go and find a photo of the van. So, um, can I introduce to you briefly one of the many wonderful local histories we're producing in this country with wonderful pictures. Here's a picture from 1922, the Civil War in Ireland in Wexford. Here's uh, a member of the Defence Force providing advanced care in that van. This is a converted bread van from Wexford Town. You can see the Red Cross painted over the bread sign. You can see his uh, Red Cross painted onto his armband. And the advanced skill he's actually demonstrating, you may not see so clearly, is the inch of ash on the fag that he's holding over the injured limb, uh, which is protruding from under where the breadboard generally sat. So, lots and lots of opportunity here. Drivers to change. Um, the familiar ones, but important ones that the health services drivers are seen to also be the drivers for the EMS system. Our population demographics are changing rapidly. An older population, more chronic illness, more complex illness, more scientific and technological change in medicine, more organisational and structural change within our system. The publication last year of a reorganised group system for our hospital network is only the first pointer to the role of the ambulance service in the future. The measures we use to assess the quality of what we do. Equally, the introduction this year by the Department of Health of preliminary key performance indicators, including key clinical ones, is going to drive all of us in the health service. Our patients and our communities, the people that we serve, rightly have high expectations, but they're increasingly high expectations cost. It's been mentioned already, it is inevitably one of the issues. Um, although our costs in this country, the public health service, have fallen slightly in the last couple of years, they increased fourfold between 1998 and 2008. We went from 4 billion euros to 16 billion euros in our public health service. Clinically, our practice changes. In my specialty general practice, Caring for about a million people in the public health service, we have gone from prescribing 20 million items in the period at the end of the 90s to 45 million items for the same size of population over a decade. Lots of things are changing. What's emergency medical science then? The discipline we've used to bring all of our programs from UCD together is the one that you've demonstrated beautifully this morning. And a very simple, important definition <laughs> is used by us to reflect much of the superb practice that currently goes on. The van driver nonsense. It's 80 years since that was relevant. The quality of technical, scientific, clinically wonderful, it reflective practice that happens is tremendous. We can do better. And that's the challenge that we've heard about this morning. EMS is about the integrated care, it's the science, I should say, underpinning the integrated care at a high quality level. And it includes, from my perspective, elements of definitive and preventive care. This is not just about the emergency. How do we best support ourselves and our colleagues to achieve those goals? All that we can. In the UK, in England in particular, the publication of the PEEP report last year, um, com commissioned by the College of Paramedics, 
but largely supported by the HSC, or the NHS, I should say, executive, and the Department of Health, is leading to the decision to introduce an all-graduate work workforce to the UK uh, within its ambulance services before the end of this decade. That may seem like a tough decision to make, or a tough choice to make, but let me just pull one of the issues from that report that I believe underpins it. On your left-hand side, our current large-scale practice by EMS personnel, lots and lots of low-acuity, algorithmic-type care. If we want providers to move to that smaller number of complex issues that require sophisticated decision-making, we have to support and train and guide them in doing it better. Those decisions, those judgments, those businesses of taking responsibility, those are tough things. We know how to do those within the health service and its educational structures. We have a responsibility <coughs> within the existing healthcare system to support our colleagues within EMS to do these things to the standards that they want, that you want. So, big challenges, but fundamentally it's about saying these are not challenges that are going to be uh, unachievable. They are available in terms of resources they are tangible, I should say, in terms of resources that we currently have. Actually, it's interesting to hear colleagues on AP or paramedic programs going to academic courses or exams and saying, I'd rather do a car crash than do that sort of test exam, teaching session, or whatever it is. These scenarios, these situations actually get you more comfortable. We need to retain the level of competence and expertise that you bring to these complex, challenging environmental and clinical challenges. But we also need to add to that the opportunity to care for much more complex and less straightforward decisions. So a child with spots. Boys are a lot more than child with spots here. But equally, over the phone or the telemedicine or in the absence of, the J of Jason's video uh, and all uh, visual information, here's another child with spots. So there are huge differences between these. The ability to make those distinctions, I believe, is part of the fundamental educational challenge that we can prepare and support colleagues to achieve. Clinical skills. The ability to um, have an up-to-date and constantly changing knowledge base. The ability to make those decisions appropriately and take responsibility and be supported in taking those responsibilities. Obviously, team working and multidisciplinary care, as we've heard, form key elements of that practitioner's role. But so does reflection and learning and leadership of future change. And the ability to look at scope of practice, to adjust it, and to add or change appropriately are all tasks that should not be imposed on your new emerging profession from outside, but should come from within it by people appropriately trained at an educational level to deal with those tasks. Finally, the education of EMS staff or practitioners in the future we argue should come within the broader framework of the higher education institutions that currently train doctors and nurses, paramedical staff of all sorts. There is no question that that is an exclusive process or in any way should undermine the enormous and partnership approach that needs to be the contribution of our ambulance services. The needs of the profession I'm talking about are not the same ones as the needs of the ambulance service. The needs of the services are distinct. We should not confuse them. But we have a partnership role to play. And as this HEA policy statement from last year says, our role, the role of the HEA has to be to encourage higher education institutions to better address the needs of the societies that we jointly serve. I can think of no better way to do so. Sorry I've gone on. My final slide. A set of students who are enjoying their educational experience. And fundamentally, if our students within all of these new systems are not being fulfilled in their ambitions, we're failing. Actually, these are medical students. The final year medical students, they actually come from three different continents. They're being taught in a nursing skills lab by an advanced paramedic. 
and they're enjoying themselves. I give you multidisciplinary, I give you the emerging profession of EMS, and I give you the principal reason, to be honest with you, why together we can do a better job. Thanks very much.